Good morning. So I'm continuing talking about the Dharmapada um, and yeah, I'm going to talk about a few verses of the next section which is the thousands, the thousands. So these are the first few verses. Better than a thousand meaningless words is one word of sense which brings the hearer peace. Better than a thousand senseless verses is one which brings their hearer peace. Better than a thousand useless verses is one word of the Dhamma which brings the hearer peace. So yeah, it just reminds me of you know how much we say, how much we think and say, um, well, which isn't very meaningful. And that when we hear something that is meaningful, you don't need a lot of it. It actually has a very big effect, which brings the hearer peace. A lot of the time, um, we're sort of stirring ourselves up, aren't we, with our thoughts and our, our words. Stirring up ourselves and stirring up other people. With things like, like gossip, or meaningless chatter or um, humour that's rather dodgy, maybe at somebody else's expense or something like that. And when we hear the truth, um, it's very different to that, isn't it? When we hear something that resonates somewhere in us very, very deeply, that we, we know we're hearing something of significance. Makes me think a little bit of um, poetry. And... For a long time, I didn't really read any poetry at all. I mean, I'm still not, um, I still have a, a kind of difficult relationship with poetry. And it's, it's partly because I, I want to understand it all. You know, I want it, I want it to make sense. And uh, a lot of poetry, I don't know about you, but I find it quite difficult. And if I don't understand it, I can feel very frustrated. But actually, a lot of... Um, yeah, a, lo a lot of poetry, what it does, it, it cuts through it cuts through a lot of words and says something in quite a condensed and profound way. And that can be very uh, meaningful for us, you know, to hear something that even if we don't fully understand something. So I remember when I first heard the Heart Sutra, it was the first um, puja that I'd ever been to. And I heard the Heart Sutra and there was something that resonated very deeply in me. You know, I knew that I was hearing the truth and I knew I didn't understand it and that was frustrating and I wanted an explanation of it, which of course was going to be a long time coming. But um, but I knew that it was it was very significant. Yeah. So, one word of sense which brings the hearer peace. One word of the Dharma which brings the hearer peace. So, words have a very big effect on us, don't they? They, go, they, they run very deep. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I love being in um, groups with people who want to learn and talk about the Dharma because we're talking about our lives and how to apply a teaching which makes a profound difference to our lives but only if we actually apply it of course. Anyway the fourth verse of this thousand section says though one man conquer a thousand times a thousand men in battle he who conquers himself is the greatest warrior. Though one man conquer a thousand times, a thousand men in battle, he who conquers himself is the greatest warrior. So I think one of the things that that suggests is how difficult it is actually to conquer oneself. And um, well, it raises the question, why should we want to conquer ourselves? I mean, one, one answer to that, and one rather obvious and simple answer to that, is that um, at the back of our minds, we all know that life is short. 
that everything is impermanent and that we are going to die and that we never know when that's going to be. And there's some very deep-seated fear in all of us about that. Well, that is because we haven't conquered ourselves, basically. We haven't accepted reality. We've set ourselves against reality and think somewhere deep down that um, we could cheat it. You know, it's like... Well, that's why we often put off thinking about our own mortality. It always seems to happen to someone else. You know, somebody else dies, not quite us. And even though we could admit and of course say, yeah, of course we're going to die, of course we are. It's not a reality in terms of um, something that we are very aware, no, that we know at a deep level could happen at any moment. So, you know, you can see I'm the age I am. I could right now have a heart attack. I could have a stroke, anything that can wipe me out just like that. And if we don't live really knowing that, then actually there's no way that we've conquered our own fears. And fear is a great driver in our life. You know, it stops us doing things. It um, keeps us small. It, it really stops us fulfilling ourselves, you know, because we have some deep fears. Fears of not being liked, fears of getting it wrong, fears of dying. And all those weaknesses, um, and, um, well, they're not even weaknesses, they're unrealities. That's what they are. They're just not clearly seeing. So if we conquer ourselves, it really means to be fully aware and awake to the reality around us so that we can live fully, so that we can live without fear, so that we can embrace the fact of our mortality and live accordingly. Because the great thing about... Um, knowing deeply reality, knowing deeply the teachings, not just understanding them at an intellectual level, but really having it drop deep inside us so that we are prepared at any moment that actually anything could happen. You know, we could lose our life. We could lose our loved ones. Everything changes. You know, if we really lived like that, then there would be no no fear. We would we could give up fear, and we could live very much in the present moment. You know, really appreciating people and all the beauty around us. So um, it reminds me of one of those very early verses in the Dharmapada. Um, right at the beginning, where it says, I think it's about verse 5, somewhere around there, where it says, many do not realise that all must one day die, and those who know this fact, all strife is stilled. So, you know, it makes it clear to us that actually we're not going to suffer, we're not going to, um, we're not going to fight with people, we're not going to do that if we are aware that we are mortal that we're going to die and that we never know when that's going to happen we'll we'll deal with our quarrels you know we won't be at odds with people in other words we will live in the love mode and that's what we want to do isn't it we want to live in the love mode so you know you can fight as much as you like you can conquer a thousand you know men in battle which um of course, in the time of the Buddha, there was a lot of fighting for, for, as there still is, you know, for land, for supremacy and so on. And it's all an empty waste of energy. It's ourselves we need to, we need to come back to all the time that we need to look at. So, in a way, it's deceptively simple. We need to live with the reality around us. It's not some mystery, really. That's the, that's the fascinating thing. It's not a mystery. It's very obvious. 
but actually emotionally, deep down, it's so difficult for us not to hang on to um, the self that we think we've got, something permanent and enduring that's going to somehow continue and we grip on tightly to that. So if we can live with a bit more reality soaked into us, then there will be no fear. We'll live much more freely. So that's probably enough for today. I'll see you tomorrow.